Okay. Governor Romer, I'd like to welcome you to Iowa. Well, thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, that's uh, great to have you here. Uh, this is. I'm a... beginning to eat corn for breakfast. I don't know <laughs> what it means. <laughs> well, there's so many interesting ways to do corn. My, uh, I do a fantastic corn fritter that sometime I'll have you? to uh, get oh, you to cool. try it. Oh, it's uh... a New York or an Iowa corn fritter. It's actually it's a southern corn fritter that I picked up from a relative. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. No, cool. No, it's, uh, but it's so good to be back in Iowa. Yeah, no, Iowa's a great uh, state. I just love it, and I'm glad to have you here. Uh, as I told you, I'm uh, with a new podcast called Skeptic's Guide to Government. What we're looking at is not so much uh, politics, but more policy. Yeah. And so um, I, I have some questions in that vein. The first thing I was wondering is, what is your thought about 30 years from now, what do you think the biggest existential risk to the country or to our way of life will be? Apathy. Uh, people decide not to get involved. People would make a decision that they're not important and that big money and special interests are going to own politics. And it, so it doesn't matter what they do. And to me, that's always been the greatest danger to America. Mm. America's a nation built on freedom, and it has to be it has to be exercised day after day after day. And when government gets too big, guarantees too much, we think, who cares anymore? So to me, that's the danger now and 30 years in the future. But obviously, they have to be apathetic about something. So what do you think is they're going to be apathetic to the point that it's going to be an existential danger to us? Well, the fact that we're not we're not at risk to 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 advance in life. You have to put yourself at risk. You have to decide to love someone or to form an alliance with someone. That's called taking a chance, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. And, and, and what made America what it is, is its, its willingness to take risks on each other, to start a new business, to uh, plant a crop. That's a risk. Mm. The safest thing to do would maybe take three quarters of the money and not have to do anything. Mm. So my fear is the apathy that leads to killing the entrepreneurial spirit. And, and that's one of the reasons I stay involved and try to motivate people. A young person can be anything they want, but they have to take some risk. They have to know enough about themselves to stand up tall and take a risk. And my fear is that we're no longer a nation of risk taking. Okay. Concerns is science education. Yes. In the United States. Yes. What are some of your thoughts about science education in the United States? I, I never thought I'd live to see science actually denigrated like it's been. It, it's, like, it's like mankind has not forever been in search, curious about how things work. That's what science is. It starts off as a theory and then the theory is not just question marks, it then becomes a, a group of laws that are the theory of gravity or Einstein's theory of relativity. That doesn't mean it's not true because it's a scientific theory. It means it's a group of laws that, that, that change how we operate and how things move. I have noticed, I'm 67, uh, I have noticed as I grew up from that cotton farm, where things were scientific as to how many things now are anti-science. Mm. And know, Carl Sagan could not have said it better. <laughs> it, it, it bothers me. I mean, I think you can be spiritual and scientific. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. But, but to have spiritual values override science facts, to me, is not, is not progressive, is not good, and is not spiritual, in my opinion. Uh, I, that that leads me then into my next question, which is really about a lot of the science denial that we've been having. Yeah. And I'm curious about some of your opinions on some of those aspects, uh, such as, let's say, global warming, and yeah. then uh, the sub-question of, is it anthropogenic? Well, I, 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 I don't know what anthropogenic means, by the way. Okay, but a human created, man created. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't think we can answer that. I think the globe is warming. 
beyond scientific uh, curiosity now, it's a scientific fact. The cause of it is probably more than one thing. There are cycles in the Earth's history where the temperature rises and falls. We might be on one of those cycles. But I don't think there's any question that man's effect on his environment is also a factor. So we need to be commonsensical. We need to be, uh, we need to plan out how to ameliorate, how to diffuse man's effect. Maybe man has nothing to do with it. How can we take the risk? Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the question of evolution versus intelligent design and the issue of teaching uh, intelligent design in schools? Well, intelligent design can be taught in schools in religion class. Uh, evolution needs to be taught in science class. Uh, once again, I, I, I'm a, I believe in both science and religion, but, but I don't mind teaching in religion things of spiritual back, things of faith. That's where religion comes in. Things of science ought to be taught in science class. Evolution is a thing of science. We have moderated our opinion over time, it changes over time, but it is scientifically based. Uh, cre creationism is a thing of faith. I'm a Methodist, I'm a believer, but it ought to be taught in religion class. Not in science. By the way, let me th shake your head on that one. <laughs> um, right now, Iowa, for the first time in 40 years, is having a measles epidemic. And that. one of the problems is is that uh, the vaccine deniers. Um, uh, what would you say to the uh, mother who is um, who is trying to decide sh uh, should I give my child uh, his vaccines? I'm not a doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. My doctors tell me, and my reading confirms, that reports of problems have been exaggerated with the vaccines. But uh, the mother ought to know the history of the vaccine and the results. I think we need to look at the results and make our opinion. But as far as determining what role vaccines play, I'm not smart enough. I've seen no definitive answer. I, when I guy came up to you to ask you if you did interview, I noticed that you had a insulin pump. Yes. And uh, and I mentioned that I'm actually the state chair of the American Diabetes Association, so we got into a very nice conversation yeah. there. Um, I, this is uh, this is really you are a personal benefactor of um, where science couldn't uh, really run for president without it. I've been a, I've been a di diabetic for 40 years plus since I was a young man in my 20s. Uh, I took five insulin shots a day for years. And you're obviously proud of the fact I, that I have a right pump now. Have it that everybody it, can it see gives it. me so much more freedom. I'm I'm so much more stable in my ups and downs of blood sugar. It it allows me to do things I've always wanted to do like run for president. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, your answers uh, has, um, have really impressed me and I want to say that I uh, really wish you well. And, Thanks, uh, Doc. And I think that uh, uh, if it comes down to it, then you have my vote. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Uh, I um, think uh, that uh, my yeah, cameraman actually has a question on the documentary good. that he's uh, working